so I wanted to uh, get you, uh, Niall and Nathan, to to sort of talk me through uh, what the game, like what, how in this universe the game is set. Like where is it set? What, what's the the time frame and the location? And you know a little bit about the the, the story as a whole and how it fits into the overall lore. It's set in, um, well, it's set near here in, Sh- not quite in Sheffield, but in like South Yorkshire and Derbyshire. And eventually you get to Dover. Um, we took a few creative liberties with that. Dover's a little bit closer to, a little bit more northern than it actually is. <laughs> um, you go through the yeah. sewers and then you, oh, I'm in Dover. But um, yeah, uh, it was, it's more, because we, we, it used to be titled War of the Worlds, but we had to retitle it. because Well, I decided to retitle it because I didn't want people to think it was War of the Worlds telling that story again, because it's not. It's, it's more about Harper set in the in the backdrop of the martian invasion so yeah and i think all the world's yeah and i think we're sort of on the lead up to a a thing where we are going to start to get all these different adaptations from this so i mean it's been a it's been a good while since the spielberg one but now we've got like the the bbc series there's a a, the 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 american series that has just been made so that's probably going to spark a lot more like we've seen on youtube people um kind of uh, trialing some tripod animations they've been working on um so like this this could be like yeah this could be like a a lead to like uh, uh, just way more adaptations so it's good to kind of get our foot in in first really with Mm -hmm. especially with the games uh, because it's not really that big currently um so but so yeah the, the universe it's in is uh, it, it's really sort of it takes place at the, at the sort of the start of the takeover where you're sort of walking in you're walking into it as everything has like suddenly uh, everything's been like been invaded for the, like the past week in the game and uh yeah so that's where that's really the setting for the game oh brilliant yeah you mentioned the um the tv shows that have been that have been made recently the the american one is set in modern times and the BBC one is set in the the original timeline of the original story I believe you know the uh, the turn of the, the the 20th century um so yeah you definitely got your foot in the door at the right time and also it's kind of piqued people's interest again because until after the Spielberg movie in 2005 I think a lot of people sort of wore the world's kind of drifted off the radar a bit but it's such an interesting story and like you said you know you can tell so many stories in here you got you got the story of Harper with this one and, you know, if somebody, if you were to do a sequel or, you know, something that was running concurrently, you could follow many other people's stories, you know, all over the world. Um, so I wanted to, you know, how, how did this project come about? Like, have you, have the team been a fan of the original work for a long time? And how did, you know, this idea come to be, really? I've always wanted to play a War of the Worlds game. Mm. And generally, I'd make games that I'd want to play. Um, and it started actually just as a, a game about an alien invasion and we were um i think we spoke actually years ago before we even started this about doing a world war of the worlds game someday we started this alien invasion game and then we thought well what can the aliens be war of the worlds obviously that's what we want to do so um i mean yeah and then i asked now i said do you reckon you'd be able to to model a tripod is it and animate it because he's now he'd never done any animation before and um he said well i'll give it a go so he did it and then, um, and then we kind of started moving more into uh, like adding more concepts from War of the Worlds, like things like Redweed and um, what else did we got? We did, we made the flying machine that was in there, but um, we had to cut it because we ran out of time. Um, we also made uh, Black Fog, Black Smoke, or whatever it is that's in there. Uh, that plays a, a, and the cylinders. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they'll, they, you'll see them quite a lot. Nice. We had someone. Um, my friend Beth, she designed the tripods for us, and we did. We used we used a lot of um, the 2006 film as reference for that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it did, it did. It turned out looking more like those ones than I would have liked. But when she showed us the the design, I loved it, and I thought, well, we're going to go with that now. <laughs> um, I think it's like, it's been long enough since that film came out. There's uh, and there's there's also I mean there hasn't been a video a World of Worlds video game I think since like. At least, remember there's one on PlayStation yeah. One. Uh, mm. friend, <laughs> yeah, I think I had a friend that I'd go around and he'd be playing on PlayStation One, like the War of the Worlds, and that so was based on the original movie, uh, I think. 
No. Yeah, yeah, it was. Mm. Um, it was, it was like a franchise. I was sorry. Go on. Xbox Live Arcade was a, a, a like a, I think it was a side-scrolling one. What was it? Um, yeah, wow. I never played it, but I because I, when I was um, trying to register the title, that it was already taken. So we, we ah, that's why you came up with Grey Skies. Yeah, well, we it was called Grey Skies first, and then I changed it to War of the Worlds, and then I changed it to Grey Skies War of the Worlds story again because of the. I don't want people to think that we're retelling that same story. Um, mm-hmm. I want people to go into it. It's it's a set in the universe. Um, yeah, and that's what people are playing. Um, the, I mean, there's a few. For example, Martians. You won't see any Martians in it. Mm. Um, just because we didn't have the budget to, to design and animate some Martians. But we are already doing a spin-off. Ooh. And there will be Martians. Nice, nice. I like <laughs> it. I like it. Because I was obviously... Yeah, exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love exclusives. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. I, I, I'm, I'm so excited to play it because I, I love like stealth action games. I mean, my favorite game of all time is Metal Gear Solid. So Yeah, so we do a lot of inspiration from Metal Gear Solid, actually. That's so and cool. That's so cool. More with yeah. like... Like the, the stealth gameplay, if you could like to avoid, like it's better to avoid the enemies. It's more fun for me to avoid the enemies. I mean, you could take them out if you want to with, you can't like engage them directly. But like the, using traps and... Yeah, equipment. Harper's got a bunch of other tools that she can... And it's fun. I mean, I, I don't know, you know what they say about creatives, they're always so critical of their own work. But I actually always start playing it. Like, this, this is good, I'm enjoying this. This is really fun. So I was also going to ask, um, I was going to get Francesca involved now. Um, What's your, um, obviously we, we've uh, found out that you haven't heard of the musical, but what are your experiences with the, uh, with the lore of War of the Worlds as a whole? You know, like the, the, the book, the radio, yeah. play, anything like that? I saw the original film way back when, and then I saw the, the Tom Cruise ones, the one that comes to mind more than anything else, to be honest, just because, you know, growing up on Tom Cruise. It, it's it, a generational it thing, really. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that one more than the original for me, but yeah, I had no idea about the musical. That's a <laughs> fun experience. And how did you? Uh, how did your involvement in the project? You know, obviously you're playing playing the lead, the player character Harper. How did uh, how did this project um, come about for you? Um, I worked with someone who Nathan has worked with before a few years back, and we kept in touch. And um, Nathan shot me an email probably about. Christmas last year, it was like a while back, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, just saying that he's got this new game coming out, really good character, but I want to audition for it. Um, and then it carried on from there. Mm. Brilliant, brilliant, I love that. And obviously um, we're still in amongst the uh, global pandemic. So, you know, again, big congrats on getting a game not only made, but released all whilst all this is yeah. going on in the world. Um, so how were... Uh... The two the scripts, really interesting as well. <laughs> like pre-pandemic to post-pandemic. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So how did, um, how did the pandemic really uh, affect proceedings? Like, was there, were you planning on launching this, like having it finished earlier in the year, or was your yeah. original time frame of release well, still? Much earlier. Mm. Um, but we kept getting delayed, and then, and then we couldn't do any for like two or three months we couldn't do any motion capture or anything True. or any yeah. voice work or any because it was just you, you well, people weren't allowed to travel mm-hmm. um or it wasn't safe to travel you know, whichever view you take um it had a massive effect as well because i cut i had to cut a bunch of characters i had to cut certain features i had to um i think it's, it makes it makes it's, the script is better than it was before can uh, i mention ben Ben, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, ben is Harper's original husband, who we end up losing in the next, well, the most recent draft of the script. I think for the timing and pandemic related reasons. Mm. But but I ben, think it's it a terrible character it. anyway. It was just, it was just a, you know, because I was looking for some sort of motivation for Harper to why she's doing all this, and then really, she, it's got its own inherent motivation. She's just trying to survive. Yes, I'm say. It's stronger in that in that way because it's uh, you know she is an introvert and didn't really you know she was taking the time away from so I'm, I'm you know like you've already heard the story um, she took some time for herself to establish what she wanted to do and where she wanted to take a career and um, just prior to this story happening and she's coming back from a trip uh, when she realizes everything's going on 
Um, and I think being an introvert and being someone who has chosen to be alone for a, a long period of time and then choosing to try and re reconnect with humanity and see what's happened. And mm. um, I think that's a, a stronger in the end for a, a character choice than it just being motivated by love or by one person. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, again, sort of going back to, to the pandemic, that sort of links in, you know, it's quite a relatable uh, character arc as well, because obviously so many people have been isolated for so long, but that, you know, whether or not they do appreciate being on their own or they're used to being on their own. I mean, I can relate with that because I'm quite an introvert as well, but, you know, so the, the want and the need to reconnect with humanity and survive is such a, such a powerful uh, story arc. So yeah, that's perfect, especially for, for something as yeah. like a, like a Martian invasion. Very <laughs> Yeah. Well, not the March invasion. <laughs> um, so, Francesca, how how was um, how was Harper described to you before uh, before you obviously auditioned and and uh, got the role? And how how did you how do you think you brought your own spin um, to her character? Um, she was described as being very independent, very strong uh, survivor. Um, my own spin on the character i guess i'd have to ask you guys really for that because you know i know how i see it but it's not necessarily as an objective observer you know how the character started to how it ended so open to you guys <laughs> uh, I don't know, how did, did harper evolve between before francesco and after because uh, she did change she changed quite a bit I mean, it's. I mean, it's not even necessarily a a, a question of. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the character did change, especially with the script and like, of, when Francesca got involved. It was more just seeing like, and or like even hear, hearing a voice of it, like a sample of it. It'd be like, yeah, that's that's Harper. Like it's like it's. It it's like really what now, casting. I've heard like, you so long as Francesca. Sorry, as Harper. It's kind of like who's this? It's like yeah. that's. That, actually, that's your voice, not Harper's voice. But I, I so, so it's not necessarily it's not necessarily Francesca coming in to absolutely change the character herself. It's like Francesca was really brought in to bring the character alive. Uh, yeah, that's that's the way I saw it. And then yeah, no, for, yeah, Francesca brought the character alive. And then that just whenever I kind of saw it in game, now I was like, yeah, no, this is so much more real instead of just a person silently walking around this environment. <laughs> yeah, we had to go with more as well, because it, it was originally, we had loads of cut scenes and loads of um, like, um, uh, we did facial motion capture and stuff, but our facial captured set was so terrible. It was just, I like, we I invested quite heavily last year in all this facial motion capture stuff, but it's just, it's rubbish. So I had to cut, I think all of it, the, the all, all the, really um survived of the original facial capture stuff was the neutral expression on on the character and like the in-game character's face hmm. um so really most of it now is told through like and i think it's again i think this is better because you're in game you're not being removed from it and if you, you might walk up to something and then harper will comment on it like ooh, like that cola is is like my favorite one he walks over to a a um it's like a, a cola machine and she says, mmm, that cola. And it's just, it's way, <laughs> it works way better than, um, than the cutscenes. Uh, you know, generally I think it does. Yeah, well that's, that's the thing. The, I, what I love about video games is, is how much they've progressed in, you know, not just the last few years, but like the last decade. You've got so many incredible uh, voice talent involved. Um, and that's what I love about storytelling as a whole. It's all about the characters. It's not necessarily what's going on. So, you, you know, it, it, if, if Harper was uh, a flat, boring character, either silent or portrayed by somebody who, you know, brought no life to the character, that would let the whole experience down. I think, you know, it, it's a, lot of, a lot of video games and their, the enjoyment of the audience and the players is, is based on the performances, you know, connecting with those characters uh and as i said I, I know for a fact how how amazing francesca is so you know that's uh that's already a positive for me from from the get-go um 
So what can what can players expect from a mechanics point of view? Because obviously we talked about the the stealth action element and using tools. What other things can uh, will players be getting up to whilst trying to survive and avoid enemies and such? Um, it's the me- mechanically it is mainly stealth. Um, there is a crafting system, and you can you can sort of um, combine different. So, for example, if you craft. Um, a water jar, we call it, and throw that, and then you can craft another thing called a shocker, I think it was, or an electric shocker, and you can lure an enemy onto the puddle and then throw a shocker on it, and the, the enemy will be electrocuted. Or um, you might... I was um, an engineer, just so you get Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's, that's not even clear in, in the game. I don't think that'll ever come across. I don't think we ever address yeah. that. Um, but she's an engineer. Um, cause, yeah, bollocks. It was, originally in the script, it was addressed. Um, we well, don't, you know, real engineers don't go around going, oh, yeah, everything's oh, yeah, they just do it. So, you know, <laughs> pass me these yeah. components. It's all right, I'm an engineer. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> subtle storytelling. The fact that she can do it, you're like, oh, she must have previous experience. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she can build stuff, which is good. <laughs> and she's been through the ringer. Like, she has been, she, she's in. They are horrible oh, to her in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything that can happen and go wrong, it happens. Yep. It's, um, it's like board, borderline comical, just how much misfortune she gets. And also just the, the, what she's able to survive. Yeah. She's like Jack Bauer. <laughs> well, that, that's, the, um, that's the video game side of things. You look at some video game characters, you're like, how are they still alive? How are they survived? <laughs> so, you know, that's the, yeah, well, that's, that's the liberties you can take with a, with a video game for sure. Yes. Yeah, my, my always like call back to where, whether I think something is realistic in a game or not. I was like, they wouldn't survive that. Is always just looking at Nathan Drake, where mm, he's like, absolutely, he's in, he's in the middle of the Arctic. This train is hanging over a cliff. He's been shot like twice, but he's just <laughs> he's holding still... on with one arm, climbing up. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, okay, no, we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, I love that. I love that. Um, so you. Um, your your studio, uh, Steel Art Software. You um, were founded in 2015. Is that right? Uh, yeah, kind of. I think I started working in 2015, and hmm. I incorporated in 2017. Okay. Um, so the the name or the brand didn't actually start until 2017, but I've been working on games since late 2015, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, so just a a couple of quick fun. Uh, fun questions like uh, do you prefer this or this to finish off because uh, I see the countdown six and a half, <laughs> yeah. six and a half minutes um, and I tell you what that countdown has put me on edge because I've seen the movie Host about four or five times and I feel like in six minutes there's going to be a jump scare um, so to, <laughs> to, to, to finish off I mean we, 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 we briefly mentioned this earlier um, all, th- all three of you, do you prefer the original 1953 War of the Worlds movie or the Steven Spielberg Tom Cruise remake? Remake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to also have to say remake. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, was, I was one, I know it was a bit like Marmite, that film. Some people hated it. Some people loved it. I loved it. I loved that. Yeah, I thought it was great. It was a good, a good one. And Francesca, I- same? I didn't enjoy it when I first watched it, but watching it again when I was a bit older, I enjoyed it more. Mm. Um, but I actually really enjoyed the recent, the American series, well, right up until the, the end, because the end was not good. Um, but the rest of it was really, really good. <laughs> I nice. didn't watch that. It's I, was, I, was, I still need to catch that, because I think it was on like HBO or something that we struggled to get yeah. over here. Yeah. It's very um, suspense-filled, which I prefer generally, for mm. rather than like, you know, jump scares it's mm. part of the reason why i really enjoyed working on this because um nathan's got a fantastic uh idea of a score and using music within it to really mm-hmm. set the scene mm-hmm. and that's so powerful for me so awesome yeah. awesome the, the the thing that stands out to me about the 2005 remake is um <laughs> it's a lot of fun uh it would i say it's a brilliant movie no is it fun mm. absolutely it's a it's yeah. a super super fun and i love the fact that no matter where tom cruise runs he always manages to dodge, <laughs> dodge that beam especially when he's first running away from the tripod I, I always remember the 
when the tripod first comes out the ground and everyone is just that stood there just staring at it and then there's that one bus driver you see just getting out of dodge he's just legging it he knows he knows some shit's gonna go down <laughs> um and everyone else just stands there and i'm like well you're gonna get beamed aren't you you know you're gonna it's the zombie land rule cardio <laughs> yeah cardio yeah get out of there Some, something dangerous yeah. is coming run i mean good. also on the counter i guess because I, I did rewatch that quite recently mm. a good quarter of the film is probably just dakota fanning screaming <laughs> <laughs> being the most one of the most annoying well. characters <laughs> I love the scene as well that they, they get the only working car and on the freeway there's just a convenient like slalom of cars to get through <laughs> yeah. but no, it's 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 dumb it's fun um you know it's it's harmless fun to be fair talking about it now and doing all of this I I might re-watch it later re today it. um and finally I know obviously this is with the musical being news to Francesca this is really for, for Nathan and Niall um uh, do you have you listened to both the original Jeff Wayne musical and the new one? No, I haven't listened to either of them. I mean, I, um, I went away. I heard about. I saw. I wanted to go see it. I think mm. it was in London. Yeah, and, um, they did the stage show as well. Yeah, yeah, they were all cancelled. Um, obviously, when all this, because I thought it would be great, like research. So mm. I, you know, snide. I think they're, I I think they're up again expense. for release or, or for showings now. You can book them for twenty twenty two. I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so something I definitely want to see because I remember um, first hearing the original version when I was a kid and just absolutely loving the uh, the music. And then when they said that they were doing a new version with Liam Neeson, I was just like, well, he's got one of the best voices in the biz. So that's yeah. the per perfect skills. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna he's gonna find the Martians and uh, he's gonna kill them. So, <laughs> um, right. Uh, that's actually quite good timing because there's like two minutes left. So I go. Ah! Sorry, I added in the air. <laughs> what the hell was that? Jesus. <laughs> I was like, I was like, two minutes is enough. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you so much for for chatting with me.